This video is a review about working with right angle triangles. We need a few of these skills to be able to do the component method that's going to be coming in the upcoming video. So this should be a review of grade 10 science, but we'll just work through some things here, or grade 10 math I mean, but we'll just work through some things here. So first things first, find the length of a missing side of a triangle. In physics, we can use the sine law and the cosine law just like in mathematics but for right now at least we're only going to use right angle triangles. So let's say for example we have the hypotenuse and we have an angle and we're going to find the length of the other sides. Remember that for trigonometric ratios we label things the long side is the hypotenuse, the opposite side to the angle is the opposite which I will just call O from now on, and the side that is beside the angle or adjacent to the angle is the adjacent. Again, I'll just be calling that A from this point forward. So if I want to identify what the O is, or what the opposite of this triangle is, I'm going to use the sine ratio as it relates my unknown O to my known hypotenuse. Putting the numbers in, sine 30 equals opposite over 10. And here I'm going to use my calculator to evaluate sine 30. Uh, when you're using your calculator, ensure that it's on degrees so that you don't actually end, accidentally end up with the uh, resulting angle from radians or gradients. So it needs to be on degrees. Sine 30 happens to be 0 0.5. It's one of those special triangle numbers, so we should just know that one. And that's the opposite. So if I multiply both sides by 10, I get the length of my opposite to be 5. So that is equal to 5. On the adjacent side, again, I'm going to use my given information, my hypotenuse. So I'm going to say that my cos of theta is equal to my adjacent over my hypotenuse. And if I insert my numbers here, cos 30 equals adjacent over 10. And for cos 30, you're probably just going to grab your calculator. It works out to 0 0.866. The adjacent over 10. And if I multiply both sides by 10, then we can see that my adjacent is 8.66. So that would go here. So as long as we know at least one side and one angle, we can find the other two sides of a right angle triangle. Alternatively, let's say that we have two sides of a triangle. Let's just, for the heck of it, call this one three and this one four. There's no good reason for that. I'm just making up numbers. And I want the angle. In this case, again, I can use the same technique to label the sides. The side that is opposite my angle is called the opposite. The side that is beside or adjacent to my angle is called the adjacent. And the long side gets the funny name hypotenuse. Now here I have my opposite and adjacent, and so the trigonometric ratio that relates to those two is tan theta. Tan theta, 3 over 4. And then to get the angle on its own, I do the inverse tan function. So theta equals tan inverse 3 over 4. Uh, you're just reaching for a calculator here, don't be trying to do anything like this. But again, a quick reminder, make sure your calculator is on degrees. Thirty-six point nine degrees. Also note that that three over four is in brackets, so depending on your calculator you might want to hit tan bracket three divided by four instead of uh, just tan three and then divided by four. You want to make sure that it's the division happens before the inverse tan function. 
So that's 36.9 degrees. And just as I've drawn it here, if we presume that this was east and this was north and we wanted to write that as a heading, we would say that that is east because see we went east first, then we went north. So we would say that's east 36.9 degrees north. If we have a right angle triangle and we have the two sides and we don't have an angle, so let's say we'll use the same ones we used last time, three and four. To find the length of the hypotenuse, we can use the Pythagorean theorem as well. So you could use three and four, come up with the angle, and then use one of these formulas to find the missing side if you really prefer. But what I find most students are more comfortable with is just using the Pythagorean theorem. I write the Pythagorean theorem as h squared equals a squared plus b squared. And that reminds me that it needs to be my hypotenuse. that is alone on the left hand side of this equation. Putting my three and my four. And usually when I square root, I would have to say that's plus or minus five. But since I'm just doing some geometry here and it's clearly a length, I don't really know what minus five would be. So I'm just gonna call it plus, plus five. Uh, so that's how you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the uh, length of the hypotenuse on the right angle triangle, how you can find individual sides given the hypotenuse and an angle, and how you can use the opposite and the adjacent to come up, with a, come up with an angle. Of course, in math class, you learn more flexible things to do, more different kinds of things to do, but if you can do these basic things, you'll be able to do everything we need for physics in grade 11 for the component method.